Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about, we, you know, we obviously talked about Nick Chubb already, but let's talk about some other names here. PUP just add additions to the roster, just like kind of late preseason stuff that may have gone. You might just be wanting like to know how to act on it. Right. Let's start off with the name before we get into PUP. Let's start off real, real quick with the name Dalvin Cook. Obviously he got signed by the Dallas Cowboys um, and kind of move. I think that was, it was kind of shocking the timing of it. Like, we weren't really expecting anything. He went out there, and then the next day it was like nothing, and then he signed, right? Mm-hmm. But Dalvin Cook, obviously this backfield doesn't have just a rock-solid player. We've been always – this whole preseason, we've been wondering, is it Zeke? Is it Rico Dowdle? Is it Zeke or Rico Dowdle? And now we yeah. throw Dalvin Cook into the mix. Seems like this might be a problem for fantasy. How are you dealing with this Dalvin Cook thing when it comes to this Dallas backfield? I, I just think it's a mess. Um I, honestly, if there's a guy that I think is probably going to lead the backfield in touches, I don't know if it's going to translate to leading the backfield in fantasy points. It's probably just going to be Zeke. And I, I think that honestly, Zeke and Dalvin are really cooked. Um, I, I mean, oh they've my. been, they, they, well, yes. Oh, I didn't even realize I did that, but, <laughs> but like you look at the efficiency metrics, obviously efficiency metrics taken for what they are, but like, these two guys have been just on a sharp, sharp decline. Bottom of the league the past two years have switched teams, have switched teams again. So it's just – this is a good offense, though. That's the problem is that this is one of the better offense, one of the higher scoring offense in the NFL, and it's a backfield that's probably going to have a, a decent amount of goal line carries, that there's going to be opportunities for these guys to score touchdowns. It's just – you have a guy in Rico Dowdle who's 26 years old, who's done nothing throughout his entire career. Then you have Ezekiel Elliott who's accomplished a bunch of things, but older and Dalvin Cook. I just don't. If there's a guy that I would want, I guess it's probably Zeke, but honestly, it's just a backfield that is, is going to probably be a mess this year that I, I am gladly just avoiding. See, the thing is about Zeke, it's not, not a new team for Zeke. This is an yeah. old team for it's Zeke. It's an old so team, yeah. He knows the offense, knows the players, they know his talent, so... I don't think he really has a lot to prove. Like with some players, they have like Dalvin has to prove something. He has to prove yeah. that he's better than Rico. He has to prove that he's Zeke. And I don't really think Zeke is going to be like this elite RB2 or really reach more than just like RB3 flex status. Like a bi week fill in. Bi week flex guy. I think he might have RB3 value some weeks, depending on his touchdown frequency. If we get good touchdowns out of Zeke, that's a whole different player. But um, when it comes to Dalvin, I just feel like he's a body right now. Another player that adds juice to this lineup. Uh, Adds name value, not juice. Not name juice. value to this lineup to <laughs> Dallas. They had some money they needed to spend after they re-signed CD Lamb. So it gets them another name in the backfield who, if things do pan out, maybe this is a guy we can have as a, in a complimentary role over Rico Dado, who obviously has to prove he's worth getting the carries too. Yeah. So I think yeah. Dalvin Cook is more of an insurance policy than anything. No, absolutely. Uh, and then when it comes to PUP, let's go over three names really quickly. Uh, first one. Uh, we got to talk about this. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, man. And there was a lot of people taking Jonathan Brooks very early in drafts. Top 25 running backs with the anticipation that he will be this year's Todd Gurley and save your fantasy teams in the fantasy playoffs. So I know you've been a Jonathan Brooks guy. I have not. I've said, you know what? I'm concerned about the ACL. I think it's going to take him time to get back, earn the starting role. Chuba Hubbard played decent down the stretch last year. This team's going to have to see probably week 10 or week 12 before we're getting even a just takeover of the, the workload from Jonathan Brooks. The news came out, PUP, it was three to four weeks. It's officially four weeks now. How are you feeling on Jonathan Brooks? Yeah, I mean, I, I like him for where he's currently going. He typically goes like l- late eighth round, ninth round. And for me, like I've always viewed as Jonathan Brooks this way, that he was never going to, like kind of what you said, like he, it was going to be a battle for him early in the season to probably even take away the job. So, I'm okay with just storing them on my IR spot because by week four, I mean, I think the first bye week is week five this year. So you're not even going to really need a, a bye week fill in until week five. And then he's going to be back on your team. And yes, it'll probably take him a little bit of time to get acclimated into this offense. Uh, and, and he probably won't even be the true workhorse until a little bit later in the season. But once again, like, Leagues are one down the stretch. Like, yes, you have to obviously fight your way to get there, but as long as you're there and you're in playoff contention, there's there's players that can help you win your your, your leagues. And for me, Jonathan Brooks is that guy. I firmly believe 
He will take over this backfield. I'm not worried about Shuba Hubbard. I'm not worried about Miles Sanders or any of these guys. I believe that Jonathan Brooks is by far the best back when he walks onto that field. Now, obviously, maybe the healing process doesn't go as planned. And he's and he's out longer than that's anticipated. Where I was go. Maybe he doesn't even play, you know, that much this season. That's always a risk, but that's a risk that I'm willing to take in that range over guys like a Devin Singletary. I mean, my God, is that guy going to help you win your league? No, he might. But John, no, Jonathan Brooks can. He can be that guy who can push for 15, 17 fantasy points per game, especially if this offense is better than what people are hoping. I mean, it can't get worse. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully it's worse. better. But so, she, yeah. you, said, you said Singletary can't help you win leagues. He was helping people win leagues last season. Yeah. Well, down Houston, the stretch for Houston. That, it, now he's saying, in one of the worst offenses in the NFL. I'm just saying, not just him, but there's other backs in that range that are going to be starting and that are going to be playing the entire season. And you got to take well, Jonathan Brooks right now in RB2 lane. Back in RB2, high in RB3 lane. I would say lane. like RB3, crazy. yeah. What ADP-wise, where's he going? RB24, RB25? That's – Back in uh, well, RB2. He's, he's falling like he's he's going like ninth round. So he's going around like I want to say like right around RB30. It's it's RB30 ish. Still, you're go. taking him now as your top backup. You haven't it. We we don't know that he's gonna be back week five. We don't know that he's gonna get a starting workload. We don't know what his role is gonna be once he returns and how effective he's gonna be on the come out. And so I think a lot of people By are the using dip. I, I, the only thing is a lot of people are are equating this to one player. It's it's the same player I hear it every time, and that's Todd Gurley. And Todd Gurley was also a much different talent than Jonathan Brooks was. So I think it's easy to say Todd Gurley, he finished down the stretch, right? But, like, this is also a different offense. This is a different player. It's going to be a different situation. I don't see it the same way. And I think that we got to give Jonathan Brooks some grace, some time to come back from the injury, and some time to, to be on the football field before we just crown him the next Todd Gurley, which is – what we do is not us, which is what a lot of people do. Apples to apples, this situation is the same. Yeah. He's the next Todd Gurley. I just don't see it. No, I, I mean, that's fair. There's obviously a lot of risk, but I'm willing to take that risk in that range. Uh, a player we don't have to worry about taking risk for, uh, A.J. Dillon, um, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a player. We are, He's going to be out for the season. So hopefully, you know, speed, God speed on the recovery there for him. But um, it does kind of change things in this Green Bay backfield. A lot of people were down on Josh Jacobs, given the fact that it would look like it was going to be a committee, A.J. Dillon and Marshawn Lloyd, uh, third-round draft pick for the Green Bay Packers. But now we have one of these backs gone, and that's uh, obviously A.J. Dillon is out. Mm -hmm. um, but does this change anything for you on Josh Jacobs specifically? I know Marshawn Lloyd's going to be easy for us to be like, yo, yeah. this is a guy you got to keep an eye on. He's a rookie. Bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, that'll be yeah. easy. But Josh Jacobs, does it change anything for you with him? Because I think there's a lot of people that have him as like a fringe top 12 guy. You see him fall in drafts a lot. He's not one of those names. New running back on, or old running back on new team. Yeah. There's a lot of narratives about him that are negative. So for me, early in the in the preseason, I was not as high on Josh Jacobs, maybe as consensus. But like as time has moved on and as I've put more thought into this, I've moved him up and like now I moved him inside my top 10. He's he's RB9 for me right now. And yeah, I think that the AJ Dillon is probably I don't want to say significant, but I do think that helps his cause a little bit. Like I do think AJ Dillon probably would have been a little bit more involved. And and but you also have Marshawn Lloyd, who's really miss a, a lot of training camp. He's been out with injury. So I, I firmly, like, I believe that they brought, like the more I thought about it, they brought Josh Jacobs in to be the bell cow running back. Like they yeah. paid him. Yes. He is big enough. Like he, he's a guy who has done it throughout his entire career, who's handled big workloads. And this should be one of the best offenses in the NFL this season. So you have a bell cow running back attached to one of the best offense in the league. So honestly, I moved him up past Kyron Williams now. So he's officially my RB9. And he's a guy that I have been drafting a lot of that I, I do think could push to be a top five running back this season, depending on, you know, injuries and all that kind of stuff. But I think he's in store for a really good season. Personally. No, see, I, and I've been on Josh Jacobs and I've had him in my top 10. And, it, you know, it more so than changes his ranking for me, it just like reemphasizes the fact yeah. that I think it was a good spot for him. So um, I like Josh Jacobs. I think. One of the good things about playing in Green Bay is down the stretch, things get colder out there. They depend yeah. on the run game a little bit more. So this is a player, maybe even if he's more pass reception heavy early on, which Matt LaFleur seems to want to get him involved in the passing game, uh, which is good to hear. 
I think having a guy like Marshawn Lloyd who still needs to prove himself behind him is going to give Josh yeah. Jacobs all the work he can handle, especially, like you said, they paid him to be one of the best running backs in the league. So I'm in there with you on Josh Jacobs. I think he's a hell of a value right now. Uh, mm-hmm. If you can get him outside the top 10 running backs, we've seen this guy be a top 10 back. He should go in the times. second round now. I, I think he should be going right there back in like the back in, back in second round. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too mad at that. All right. And then the last player um, we're going to talk about as far as PUP or just injury in general, excuse me, uh, Eli Mitchell, man. Obviously, it was kind of like once the CMC thing came out and he was you know, dealing with the cap injury, it was like, OK, maybe there's a boost in Eli Mitchell's value. But then over the preseason, Jordan Mason showed us he is the number two on this team. And there was no real like talk about Eli Mitchell, his return, how involved he was going to be. And it looks like it was for a reason because he's going to be out for the year. So obviously Eli Mitchell isn't a, uh, uh, you know, like a mover and shaker. But for mm-hmm. this Niners offense, now we have a, a whole different RB2 that has mm-hmm. potential, especially if this calf injury does linger for CMC. If they do use more of a split, Jordan Mason now. Flexworthy, bench, waiver wire still. Where are you at on Jordan Mason? So I think he's just a name to kind of note for right now. Uh, but also I do think that, and he's missed a lot too, Isaac Arendo. Like this team traded up for him in the fourth round, but he's another guy that kind of, like Jordan Mason's been there. I want to say he was with the team last year, right? I believe. Yes. So he's been with the team. So he's kind of earned that spot. Isaac Rendo needs to earn like you kind of what you're saying, like touches and everything, but he's also, but he's a guy that's, you know, combine darling team traded up to draft in the fourth round, but we've seen this team trade up to draft other guys and they just don't work out. But like, he's just, (laughs) (laughs) both these guys are just two guys to definitely keep your eye on because if CMC misses time, like this has been a backfield that they're not afraid to just give one guy the ball. Like they have one guy and that's their guy. Maybe they might, you know, take them in and out of third downs, depending on, you know, if they're good in pass pro or not or whatever. They've used Kyle use check back there before. So, but definitely a guy like if anything, whatever happened, you'd want to know who the backup is. And right now it looks like it's Jordan Mason, but real quick, one, one other guy. Well, go ahead. You can talk about your. Yeah. Your who you got? Is, is it, oh, you got to get that one out now. You said, yeah, hold on. Yeah. So I'll talk about Jordan Mason and Garendo in a second. This one seemed like you got to jump the line. Well, this yeah, one. because you skipped over him. My my boy, the, the RB1 for the Los Angeles Chargers oh, this year. Oh, my God. I'm Tyler, putting, I'm planning my flag. I'm you wasted planning, our time hey, for that. Hey, bro. hey, hey, hey. You were the one. That said he wasn't even going to make the roster. I'm I said saying. it was the beta. I didn't know he was going to be I on told the you he was going to make the roster. You did say that. He made the roster. That's that's part number one. We have an that's aging your, that's veteran. Your, that's your congratulations. We have an he made aging the veteran on the top of the depth chart. Gus Edwards, 29 years old, career backup running back. These guys don't hit, I'm telling you. Then we have J.K. Dobbins, torn Achilles. These guys don't come back year one and produce. It has not happened ever, ever. Kam- Kamani Vidal, excellent missed tackles for us in college, excellent production. Very good athleticism. He will get the chance to be the RB1 this season. Whether or not he's good enough, can take advantage of that opportunity, I have no idea. But he'll get the chance, and if he's good enough, he will be the RB1 for the Los Angeles Chargers. He's a must-roster player right now in fantasy football. Oh, my gosh. Boom. I hope you're right about this, man. Because uh, you've been, you've If been... I am, I'm going to victory lap. Go ahead. Go victory lap the shit out of that. <laughs> That's the one, the victory lap. But I think there's more of a chance that Isaac Garendo is more of a fantasy threat hey, I, than Kimani I, I, Vidal is. I like him. He, I like I mean, him more speed, than Jordan Mason. He's got 4-3 speed. We know he can take the top off, and the, the Niners are going to use him in the return game too. So um, to me, like I think everybody's going to Jordan Mason as the guy. But like you mentioned, Jordan Mason has kind of been just a guy at times. Like Sometimes yeah. he's had opportunities, and at times he looks the part, especially in preseason. We've seen Jordan Mason look yeah. great in preseason. And then we put him in regular games, and he's kind of average. I'm not going to lie. But yeah. maybe he needs more touches. I'm all for either one, but it would not surprise me if something were to happen to Christian McCaffrey. I don't well, think it will. But and, if something were the, to happen, now we get an Isaac Garendo shift in volume. And the thing with like that running game is just they they got that outside zone scheme. So I just think that Isaac Garendo would be a really good fit for that he outside zone because he's just – he's his speed. It's it just that when you – and it's like, you know, Miami, they, when these guys have speed back there that are able to just put their foot in the ground and boom, they're gone. Yeah. It just, it works out so well in that offense. So I think 
and maybe he's just not very good, Isaac Rendo, who knows. But if he can be decent, I like he can be Elijah Mitchell a couple years ago was really good for fantasy football when you were picking him up. So I think that uh, Isaac Rendo is definitely a name to pay attention to for sure. Well, hopefully we get CMC all year. We don't have to yeah. talk about that. Yeah. We get Kamani beat all for your sake. RB1, but a lot RB1, of things, let's go. 